So this communicates with OpenETS over a diagram socket. When you start it running, it actually shows you the socket pair that it's using. So um, what I actually like about this is it's not fancy. It's actually brain dead root simple. Um, but you can have any application can shoot strings at that Unix datagram socket. <laughs> Um, thanks. Any, any, any application can shoot strings at that datagram socket and get results back. This is the socket that your that your local instance of the console is bound to. Is that some type of authentication, user password, anything? No, no. It's a Unix datagram. Well, you have to be root. Unix. It's a Unix datagram socket. You have to be. You have to be on the local machine. You have to be root. So, yeah, so it's just Unix permissions. Yeah, it's just Unix permissions. So Asterisk has the whole concept of being able to authenticate into Asterisk using the CLI. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You're right. I'm sorry because this particular machine I want to install it was going to Is it left the commercial release? But um, the commands are the same. Uh, you know, this system's not really active right now, but you know. For example, the Timsys command will show you the Timsy table. This is um, it's actually an internal database of uh, Timsys that we've interacted with recently. Of course, in this case, last interaction is three weeks ago. Um, it's good. It means the system's been up that long. Um, but you know, if this were an actual active system, these these use numbers would be a lot smaller than that. You see a lot of activities. So, for example. <laughs> Wake up. Wake up, man. Wake up, man. So, um, we have a system in San Francisco that, that's like just sitting out in the open. The Timsy table up there is thousands of entries in it. Most of them, you know, they're just phones that were wandering through the neighborhood at the time. The Timsy table is huge. Um, you know, we only have maybe you know a couple dozen test phones in the building. The Timsy table is monstrous. Um, but I guess the, the, the short of this, uh, the other part of this is also the config command. Um, the OpenBTS configuration comes from a database, you know, an SQLI3 database. But you can manipulate that database from the OpenBTS command line and say interface with the config command. And if you just type config with no arguments, what you're going to get is a dump of the complete configuration table which is actually kind of big, but it is structured. It's, it's, you can see how the names are structured and they're split into groups and, and there's a sort of hierarchy to it that hopefully you can navigate and make sense of. So, for example, these, these parameters um, you know, are part of the defining identity of the base station. The GSM.identity parameters show the identity of the base station. So, we can say something like this. Then now we see all the parameters in the GSM identity set: the base station color code, the network color code, um, the mobile network code, mobile country code, location area code, and so on. And so, then if you want to change something, you know, if I want to change, I think an important note is here that not everyone understands that a mobile network. Uh, to a subscriber, it identifies to a subscriber by using just two numbers. So there is uh, when, when when you see yes these numbers. So uh, when your phone looks at a new network, uh, it understands which network it is, whether it's T-Mobile or I you know O2 or something else by looking at these two numbers, uh, and that's it. So yeah. when, when you see, uh, do a manual search and see uh, various networks, they are guessed uh, from, from these two numbers. But after a phone uh, connect, connects to a network, it could get a, a so-called short name of a network. And this is just a string. And it doesn't identify a network to a phone. It's just a human readable string uh, for you as a user to know what the network is. Mm -hmm. and it's, uh, <laughs>
Um, another command is the load command. Again, this um, um, I guess what we can't get a wired we can't get a wired Ethernet connection in here to the uh, well wired to the to the actual running base stations in this building. Oh well, we are we could do the wireless connections all that actually won't we'll be connected, but but here yeah we have no real load. Can you show how to okay. set the antenna the lowest the uh, if you're on something the moment? Sure. Program. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we got the. Um, if, if you give me a cable, I will show you a live system. Okay. Yeah. So there's some called the power command. Remember those numbers real quick. Um, there's a command called power uh, that you can use to set an attenuation. Now remember that the power numbers are given as an attenuation. So if you say power zero zero, you're at maximum power. <laughs> So if you want to attenuate 10 dB below maximum power, you say power 10, 10. It's actually a range. This system does a kind of automatic power control where when it's congested, it lowers its output power to sort of contract its coverage area um, so that you can preserve service for some fraction of people without falling into, into a DOS attack. Um, so there's actually a attenuation range that the system operates in, so the parameters are a maximum and a minimum for attenuation, but if you just want to fix attenuation, just give it the same number of both. But it's a power command. Yeah, so right now our system runs at maximum power, so you see the uh, 0 dB uh, with a record to full scale, so it's maximum power. Uh, and, well, here we have a couple of walls uh, between our antenna and this, and this place, so the signal is pretty weak. Uh, so this is a uh, common chance, and it show, shows active uh, GSM channels. Um, what it gives you, it shows you channel number. So we are running a single carrier uh, mode right now uh, for the BTS to which we are connected. So this is always zero. This is time slot number. Again, there are eight time slots uh, on the, each carrier. One is always occupied by uh, like broadcasting and um, other control stuff, and seven are by default available uh, to uh, to voice calls. But this could be configured. You could allocate less to voice calls and more to SMS messages or to GPRS. This is a configurable thing. Uh, then it shows you uh, which channel is it. So TCH TCH is traffic channel, and in GSM. Traffic is not data, traffic is voice. When you say traffic channel, it means this is a voice channel. And slash F means it's a full um, full channel because there are so-called full rate uh, GSM codec and half rate GSM codec. And so there are full channel, traffic channel, and half rate traffic channel. And uh, half rate is, well, actually uh, means that you could uh, fit twice their voice channels into a system that is a full channel. But they only sound half as good. Well, yeah. <laughs> but with AMR, it's not that bad. But we don't support AMR yet. So this is transaction ID, and this is internal information for um, for Open BTS. And so if, if uh, calls I'm just skipping the call. So this calls is our information about transactions in OpenBTS again internal state, and you could uh, find which transaction uh, belongs to which channel by looking at transaction ID. So you see this number is this again. So this transaction belongs to, to this channel, this this channel to this transaction. Then uh, you could see upper, which is up for link uh, frame error rate. Again, signal is pretty weak, so uh, this phone has very big uh, uplink frame error rate, which means the voice is not really good. Uh, RCCI is um, RCCI on a BTS uh, as it observes um, the... Yeah, and one comment on this, this is RCCI relative to the saturation point of the uh, A to D converter. So, to put a real DBM number on that, offset it by about 50 decibels. So negative RSSI of negative 60 
is um, of that scale it means you're 60 decibels below the saturation point of the receiver, um, but it means your actual RSSI is a, probably about negative 110 dBm. You know, this so this is dB, not dBm. We just yeah. remember this. So TX power. So here uh, we have uh, information from a phone. So TX power is a TX power of a phone. This is important to understand. So this is. Uh, right now it runs at the maximum power again because it's very weak signal uh, and uh, but, but if you go closer to a BTS uh, your BTS will command uh, your phone to decrease this power to save oh, to, to save your electrical power and uh, to avoid saturation of, um, of, um, of, of a BTS receiver um, again this is a closed loop, close loop uh, control, uh, as David mentioned. Uh, T, uh, TXTA is uh, time in advance. So uh, this is required because um, GSM is TDMA system. So when phone moves far away from a BTS, uh, its signal takes time. Its signal uh, needs some time to get to a BTS. Uh, and uh, if there is a phone which is very far and the phone which is very close, their signals will overlap. So BTS actually again commands to a, to a phone uh, how much uh, to oh, how to say in English sorry advance yeah how, how, how much in advance the phone should uh, send the data. So on a BTS uh, their the frames from a close phone and the far phone don't overlap. So you could basically guess uh, a rough distance to a phone by, by this number, and, and uh, their distance is, I mean, their one step is about uh, 500 meters. If I yeah, correctly. yeah, so we are pretty close, so it's zero. Then uh, the only level is a level of a BTS as seen by, okay, as a as a yeah, signal level as seen by mobile uh, phone. So it's a signal, of your, it's a power of your uh, BTS signal as it's seen by phone. Again, uh, it's minus 90, which is pretty weak. Uh, limit for, uh, for a phone to receive a signal by a standard is minus 110, if I recall correctly. No, the handset is actually 99, it's like minus 103 or something. Yeah, by the spec, the handset has a higher noise figure. Yeah, right. Also, it, roughly minus 100 something in Japan. Yeah. So this is pretty weak. And uh, downlink uh, bit error rate is uh, actual uh, bit error rate as phones see the signal from your base station. So uh, these two numbers are important uh, when you want to estimate the quality of a connection. So this number gives you an idea of how well, how good is connection from BTS to a phone, and this number gives you an idea uh, how good is connection from a phone to BTS. Is it reported for, uh, by the mobile station? Or yes. It, yeah. Everything from here down is actually coming from the phone. How often a uh, normal phone sends its message? About twice a second. Okay. And unencrypted, right? Uh, it's the same encryption as whatever the track, whatever the host traffic channel. And can you see the timing advance as well? What's that? The, the time uh, offset, time advance of the phone? Well, it's reported here. Oh, yeah. Actually, this one is calculated, I think. The timing advance is calculated. The time, well, T TXTA T is actually what, this is what the phone reports. Oh. This is what the phone says it's using. Oh, okay. So it's it's the real thing. Yeah. Um, when we run these systems, uh, you know, when we run our bigger outdoors, like earlier on, I talked about Burning Man. You know, like in the Burning Man network, you look at TXT, you see real, you don't just see zero, you see real numbers. So, so you could spot, you could locate the people, because you had to do that one cell? Or? Um, we actually have a customer, we actually have a customer that has an application, a search and rescue application. Um, where basically what they do is they put an engine catcher in a helicopter, and they, that's you know, a kind of crude way to put it, but they, they fly a big circle around the search area collecting time and advance information, and then put them into, um, put them into a, you know, a, a the position solver, sort of like you would use for a GPS system, calculate the calculate the location and so on. It's 
Um, the customer for that is a, a, a the, the Coast Guard of a European country. So how does, how does yeah, that work? It's got the same, same inquiries from, from Russian uh, as uh, MGS, which is a, well, I would say, I'm a, yeah, emergency response. Yeah. <coughs> Because we have at uh, at summers we have a lot of people lost in woods actually <laughs> it's in the northern part of Russia and they have to locate them before their phone dies. Yeah, it's a very similar sort of situation. It's it's a it's a country with a very large rural area and they uh, clueless tourists disappear in the wild in the wild um, and they have to be hunted down. Yep. Would, would it not make more sense that if they, I mean, if, if you can see that, then their phone is captured to your system, or that would be possible, no? I mean, because if this is encrypted, then you're not looking at data that they're talking no, no, to your own network. This, this is information, th these phones aren't just camped, you're getting this information from because they're on the call. engaged in active calls from the space station. Okay, so how does the helicopter get that data? Uh, it does it by, um, it, it actually does it by, by mimicking the public carrier. To get the to induce the phone to camp, then it's usually in a, in a remote rural area. There's not much coverage anywhere, so it's not that hard. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. Okay. Phone to camp. Um, but they you know, for that system, they actually only do location update requests. They they only use time in advance information from location updates. Right. And the reason they do that is because they don't want to wear the battery down. They want to be able to get measurements from large baselines, so they don't need to take them more than every six minutes anyway. And they're flying a big slow orbit around the search area, and every six minutes they get a burst of distance measurements, and then they keep flying the orbit, and they okay. take these measurements from several different angles, and then they can solve the system. Sounds strange, but if it was search and rescue, I mean, I suppose they have this stuff worked out. But it sounds like if you could call the phone and ask the person, assuming they're conscious, where well, they you are. Can't, yeah, I mean, you, know? you can't. can't. The thing but is, most guy doesn't know where he is. Yeah, these yeah. people don't know where they are to begin with. Well, you wouldn't be looking for them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting behind the tree. That's not, that's not close. <laughs> okay, not necessarily. <laughs> but some people might know where they are, but if they're in some situation where they yeah. can't move and... But you're, you it's know, an option. It, it is an option that you can't just call the phone. Yeah. The, right, the okay. system operator can't just call the phone. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's not very important. Yeah, yeah, if they can see the helicopter, they can just tell you. Yeah, throw the phone. But in general, <laughs> my, my point was, in general, you can't see this data unless you are the operator. Right. Yeah, so the call to the transaction with all the information about the transaction. So again, here you see a C0, T1, which corresponds to channel number and traffic channel, or and um, time flow number. <coughs> then you have uh, the type of, uh, uh, of a channel. Then you see MZ of the phone, uh, which is uh, creating this um, uh, and well, later well, all kind of information. So this is uh, L3TI is information from layer three, and then uh, SIP uh, call ID SIP proxy is information about the SIP side of, of the transaction. This call ID and SIP, SIP proxy is obvious. Uh, then MOC or MTC there shows the direction of the call. <coughs> MOC is mobile originated call, and MTC is mobile terminated call. Uh, so uh, this is there's a difference uh, in processing for calls which are sent to a mobile and calls which are sent by a mobile. And so the, you could understand in what direction the call is going. And two is well, there two to, to each number, and from is from number. And the GSM state and SIP state are the state variables for those transactions. And you can also look at those and know what countries those sims are from. A lot of those sure, 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 sure. But yeah, yeah, so. so in our case we are running the network 001 uh, is country code 001 and MNC is 42. So uh, country code 001 is a special number called test country and usually with test country you run uh, network net, network code uh, 01, which is test network. So most test networks are run as 00101, 
Uh, but here we have several test networks, so we want to differentiate between them and it runs 42. Um, and black is a location area code, uh, and CI is a cell identifier. Cell identifier is an identifier for base station inside the location area code, if I recall correctly. And location area code is a, a code which uh, identify uh, normal <coughs> GSM networks. Uh, you have several base stations operating <coughs> in a kind of coordinated way, uh, meaning that when phone moves from one uh, base station to another uh, in an idle mode, uh, the phone does not really send location update. And uh, it uh, send, sends location update only when it cross uh, their location area code boundary. And this is again, this is done to uh, save some mobile station power. And so the phone communicates with the base station uh, rarer, rarely uh, than, than it could do. Um, but in OpenBTS case, if you want to run several base stations, uh, it's important that you have uh, different location area codes for every base station. Because uh, OpenBTS operation uh, depends on the fact that mobile phone sends location update when it camps uh, on a base station. Because location update request is translated into SIP register, and SIP register tells uh, and tells uh, our uh, soft switch on which BTS the phone is located. And without this knowledge, BTS just do not know, or not BTS, but some soft switch just do not know where to send incoming calls. So when, for example, somebody calls you, the soft switch should know which IP address and which IP port to send this call to. And uh, this information is stored uh, in soft switch after uh, SIP register. So again, if you want to run several base stations, make sure you change location area code to different values. Um, what else is here? Oh, this is label. What is 90170? Oh. Was that uh, uh, on the waves? 90170. Close sent 90170. Is that on the waves? Yeah. What the sent? Uh, the It's just default uh, EMZ from for Sysmacom uh, SIM cards. You know. <laughs> 90170? Okay. 90170 was a satellite. 90170, yeah, it's non geographic services. Non geographic yeah. services. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so in this, in this case, we have a lot of teams in the table, in this table, and it's actually uh, cut here because uh, transpose truncated, truncated to uh, 9,000. Yes, it's a buffer size. Thing. Yeah. You know, a clever person could fix that. Okay. A clever person could fix that. Quickly. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it doesn't matter me. I'm doing all, all those. Yeah, the team is right now. So can, can, you, too. can you show or do, do you have a uh, feature that you can uh, you can match the team Z to the uh, the team Z? Temporary. You mean, you mean internally? Uh, yeah. Internally, these numbers right here are the team Z's. That first column are the team Z's. Just like in every other system oh, in the okay. world, they'll using them from a counter. This looks okay. like a counter. And it is a counter, but it's actually a TMZ. <laughs> and that's why it's in hex. So this, this 100 is not uh, 100 TMZ, it's actually uh, 200... Uh, 56. 50, 50, 56, yes. Um, so it's one of the impediments to running open BTS as an MZ catcher. Yes, it is. Because if, you're, if your home network, op if it, the public network operator sees all these it's almost returning these crazy two-digit tensies. That looks kind of funny. <laughs> so, surprise, surprise. I don't care if it's hard to use the public rules or only TS is an MC catcher. Um, so the phone gives itself whole TMZ to the network as well as the old code? Yeah. The MNC and MCC? Yeah. So, it will change everyone's by I didn't provision them. Yeah, usually it will. 
there's for, for, for people who actually operate MC catchers, there's a, a really fancy process that we go through a lot of times of repatriation that fixes them again before it turns them back. Yeah, you could choose me as if you were the other. So, yeah, anything else you can show here? Or? Um, that's the most of it. I mean, you could, if you have a phone handy, you could send an SMS to it from that command line. Yeah, we could do this. But we should do this. Let me know how to do this. So on the load it says two of seven, it says two holes that are up that are up to find you. Two of seven available traffic channels. Yeah, those holes we have seen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually, this is a single call, but two legs of this call. Again, okay. not everyone understands that. When we say calls here, we're actually speaking about legs of a, of a call. Mm -hmm. Because uh, well, the, the, the most popular question when you uh, talk about OpenBTS is how many calls does it support? And uh, well, we usually answer like 7 or 15, depending on the number of uh, Americans. Mm -hmm. and, but and people think that there could be like 7 pairs of mobile phones speaking, but that's not right. It's 7 like, single legs. So like uh, three pairs plus a single phone calling somewhere else. Yes. That was what I was saying at the last thing you said that you could terminate and why I went into a different network and then you sort of have seven auto calls. Yeah. Yes. yes. Um, Since it's all set, terminating through a voice over IP wholesale character is really easy. Just, just a practical question. When, when you launch for the first time OpenBTS, it starts with the highest power and start transmitting immediately, or because I just started before and I saw that USRP was and, uh, actually uh, was transmitting and everything. And um, the default power setting there will be zero. Okay. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> channel which is used for uh, like things like location update um, and they are too short usually and uh, yeah location update transaction only lasts a couple seconds. Yeah SCCCH is like a D channel but there's no corresponding D channel it's just an AKD channel. Okay I think well, that's all demonstration you could, you could show there like free switch if you want but it's not just a free switch connecting calls, you know. Um, well, you could show databases also. Uh, we're on. We're at the time of this one. What time? Oh, yeah, so this is exactly the finish. Exactly. <laughs> 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 Thank <laughs> you.